Okay, welcome. In this video, what I'm going to be talking through is how we can leverage Azure API management to help us enforce and secure our backend APIs, leveraging modern authentication principles, uh, you know, OAuth 2.0, integrating with Azure Active Directory, and even starting to apply RBAC to our APIs without touching the backend API code, right? The backend API can be hosted anywhere. It could be on-prem, VMs, PaaS services in Azure like Logic Apps, Functions, App Services, Kubernetes, you name it. Doesn't make a difference in terms of the pattern we're describing here. What we're really focused on is showing how APIM and the policy capability of API management can centralize and enforce all of your backend APIs without having to rely on development and code for that, right? So I have a very simple example here and lots of different ways to accomplish this pattern we're going to be talking through today. My goal is to just give you an understanding that this capability exists with API management and start to see how you might leverage it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is have a really basic function app. It's a Hello World API. And I'm going to talk through how we can start to secure that, right? One is we want to enforce that the only inbound caller to that API is going to be APIM, right? We want to centralize all of our calls through this gateway. In this case, we're going to use an access restriction on the function app to do that. Now, we could take this a step up and use a private endpoint, integrate it into, into a VNet, use all of our network security best practices, just for ease of example here, I'm going to use an access restriction, which is a basic way to ensure that the only inbound caller IP is coming from what I specify. So I'm going to specify the APIM IP as the inbound that is allowed only. Okay. And then from there, what we're going to talk about is how we can then enforce a JWT policy at APIM to ensure that any client applications, right, this could be a power app, this could be a single page application like React, this could be another API, right? Any client that is making that inbound API call needs to get an OAuth token from AAD and pass that token to APIM. And APIM can then inspect that token, validate that it is signed from AAD, and even do some RBAC checks and review the claims in that token before forwarding that request along to the backend API. So let's talk through that. So I'm going to come into Azure here and I'm going to start with our function app, right? And you can see here, this is the basic function that gets spun up when you just spin up a simple function app in the portal. So you can see it's a hello world API. There is no code here that is doing any sort of authentication authorization, even integrated with AAD, right? This is just a basic function app. So if I go ahead and run this, just as a quick example, I already have the function URL here. You can see here's the function app URL really basic response. I can pass a query parameter that says name, pass in my name, and it says, hello, Hatham, right? So if I change this you know, to Mark, it's gonna say, hello, Mark. And if I don't pass any query parameter, it's just gonna say this function triggered successfully. Okay, so really basic. Now let's start in that first step. We wanna make sure uh, that this function app can successfully be published and called by APIM. So I've gone ahead in APIM and already published that API. So you can see here, here's the API, here's the get request. If I do a quick test here, right through the UI, I'm gonna get a 200, same idea. And you can see here's the request URL. Notice now how we're going through APIM as the gateway, right? So if I look back at the function API, see how this says func API? The APIM will be proxied through the APIM gateway URL. So if I make that call, same response, right? All we're doing is just forwarding the request along. So excellent, same idea. Now what we want to do is make sure that that function app only allows calls from APIM. So again, I'm going to come into networking. P best practice here, we would leverage a private endpoint and do this um, you know, by integrating into the VNet. Again, I'm just going to use an access restriction here to, to move along. And you can see I have a rule here that says allow the APIM IP. I'm going to deny anything else. So I'll go ahead and save that. And what we expect once this uh, updates is that when I make a call here right to the function URL, this should fail, right? Because I'm not calling through APIM. But this original request we made through the APIM gateway should work successfully. Okay, so let's go ahead and validate that. So... 
Okay, we should be all set here. We can see we have an allow and deny everything else. So if I make a call here, we see a 403. If I make a call through APIM, still getting a response, right? Name equals JSON, still getting a response. Excellent. So if we look back at our diagram here, we've basically gone through this step. Now we're going to focus on the integration with Azure Active Directory here. And we're going to use the developer portal of APIM as the client, right? Again, this could be any UI, any caller to that API is going to act as the client here. Now, in integrating with AAD, I've gone ahead and already created two app registrations. We have one app registration that is associated with our backend API, right? This is where we're exposing an API through AAD. And I've also gone ahead and created two app roles that we can then leverage in APIM to apply RBAC to who's making the call. So you can see here, I have two AAD users, right? These are gonna be users in your tenant. I have an APIM demo developer user who have given uh, a role called the Hello World API caller. And you can see I have an APIM demo admin user who has a, a higher privilege role. Hello World API administrator is what I've called it. Okay. So if we come back into APIM and we come over here, what we want to do is apply a policy here. So I've, our, I've gone ahead and already made this policy. And again, ignore the details of how we're doing the policy, right? Again, I want us to focus on the pattern here before we get into the implementation details. I'm actually going to remove this required claims section for now. Right now, all this policy is doing is first validating that there is a token being passed in the request, right? So this is just making sure that you are integrating with AAD. There's no sort of RBAC here in terms of leveraging the two roles that I showed. So I've gone ahead and saved that. So now what we would expect is when I hit this call here, let's go ahead and refresh. So when I make this call here, right? Now we see a 401, JWT not present. Excellent. And that's what we expect, right? Because I'm not passing a JWT token. So pretty cool. I'm going to, I've already spun up the developer portal here. I can actually use the developer portal to get a token. So here's the developer portal. I've signed in uh, as the APIM demo developer user, and I'm just going to show that again. We've integrated the developer portal with, and already signed. I've already signed in, so it, it went ahead and saw that SSO. I'm already signed in. I'm going to go to the API here. Let's go to Hello World. Let's try it out. And notice here I can get the token. So if I don't get the token and do a send, it's 401. Let's go ahead and get the token, right? And again, you didn't see anything prompt up here. I actually have MFA enabled because I've already signed in. If I make that request again, I get a 200. And why is that? Because here's my JWT token. If I actually look at this in JWT.ms, just inspect. You hear all the claims, and here's actually the role claim, right? Right now, APIM isn't leveraging this, but you can see that this JWT token is being passed. And the audience here is the backend API app registration. So notice if we look at this CCA, if I go to the app registration, you're going to actually see that for this application, see how it's CCA, 4B? So that token is specifically issued for this backend API. So excellent. Let's take it one step further now. Let's leverage APIM, not just to validate that we've gone through the OAuth flow with, a, with, uh, with Azure AD, but if we come into here, and we can actually do it right here through uh, a nice little GUI, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it right in the XML just because I've already developed it. If we come back, come into policies. Let me go ahead and add this required claims section as well. So now, and we'll review this once I apply, you can see now what I'm requiring is the administrator hello world claim. Let's go ahead and actually update this so that we can see that it's requiring uh, the
Let's just make sure that we actually named that right. So if I come back to my app registration, here's my app registration. I've gone ahead and made the app roles. Here's the role, right, that I'm looking for. Administrator, hello world, not just call hello world. I could make it call hello world just to show you. Let me make it call hello world. Okay, I'll save that. So we do still expect uh, when me, I as the developer user here in this JWT token, we can see I have that role, call hello world. So we don't expect anything to fail here when I retry this call. Okay, I'm going to get another token, fresh token. Okay, have the token. I make the call. Excellent, still getting a 200. Now let's come back here. And let's update this, right, to be the administrator hello world. So we want it to be this role can only make the call. Okay, so I'm going to come back into here, save that. Now what we expect is even though this user is passing a JWT token, that user is not assigned to that role in the app registration, right? If I come back into AAD, we can see here, if I go to my my registrate my application and how I've assigned users and groups, you can see this APIM developer is only assigned to this Hello World API caller role. So when I come back here and try it, again, gonna get a token and I make the call and we're seeing a 401 unauthorized, right? So now let's actually do something different here. I'm gonna log in as the administrator user. And now we should also see uh, the authentication into the portal as well. So let me go ahead and authenticate. You can see Azure AD. Let me get my user here. So I'll sign in. It's going to prompt me for MFA here. Yep, my Microsoft Authenticator app. Again, this all comes by integrating with AAD. Nothing special here. That's fine. Okay, so now we're signed into the developer portal. So if I come, same idea, come into the API. Let's go to the Hello World API. I just authenticated, so it's not going to reprompt me when I go through this authorization code flow. But notice, if I reveal the secret, we should see my, this token should now have the role of the administrator. Right, so if I come into here, paste that, we can see administrator hello world. So now we do expect this to pass because I am now an administrator. So you can see how APIM just created RBAC for my API and we never changed the code of the function, right? We never changed that backend code that we were working with. It's still the same function app that we had before. Uh, so um, again, to really prove that, if I take the access restriction off, right? Basically, let's go ahead and allow all calls. When I make this API call right through the function URL, it's gonna pass fine and I'm not passing a JWT token in this case. So just to show that by, by centralizing all of our calls through APIM and then leveraging APIM policies to integrate with AAD, apply RBAC, all these modern authentication and zero trust principles that we wanna to start to align to, we don't need to rely on developers or development uh, cycles to have to implement this. So you can see when I took off that network restriction, the function app works the same way um, and, and none of the code was changed. So really simple, quick example. Um, please reach out to us to, to help you further with this pattern and how we can start to secure your APIs in any environment by using Azure API management. Thank you.